Oh, that is, that's what's up right there. So we are catching up with Roy from Downset. They have just dropped their brand new album, Maintain. Roy, tell us about this one, man. Eight years in the making. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, a it was, it was an eight year hiatus. Um, two year in the making. Uh, in, my bad. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Um, you know, eight years ago, there wasn't a band. It was, it, it, it dissipated and went on a hiatus and yeah. um if you were to ask any of us if there was going to be a sixth album you know the the mutual response would have been probably not and so everybody went off and uh uh after the one blood album you know everybody went off and and did their own their own thing and 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 you know everybody has different circumstances in their lives right now and so it, it was it was mainly what it, what it came down to was ray and i uh meeting again and and, and bearing old resentments you know and uh, we, yeah. we've been through our we've been through our ups and downs and we've had a lot of member changes um but for the most part there's always been a, a good core of of, of uh, original members for every album uh this time around it was it was right after uh I did a power flow tour and, 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 and it was just about 2020 and I got a phone call from Ray. I hadn't talked to him in about 15 years. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's been that long. Even, uh, when they made those two other albums, we, 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 we didn't really keep in touch in those times. Uh, the universal and one blood albums were the two most recent albums. Um, I was just doing my thing and, and just certain things, you know, had us separate for a while. And so he called me uh, to bury the hatchet and not to reform the band. He just wanted to call and say, hey, man, um, we know each other a long time. We're brothers. I love you, man. You know, forgive me. And I said, you know what? You forgive me. I'm the one who should be apologizing. You know, I will. I did a, I did a lot of the, you know, the, the young and dumb things. I was the one. I was the first one to introduce all those things into the band and not 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 in a way where i i meant to it was just you know that that's how it was in those times you know um i i got a plug in man, i'm so sorry uh, i'm my phone's about to lose charge and and um I, I was set up for for the computer so i i gotta get um i gotta get a charger if, if no you're right man go uh, for it charge so up i'm just gonna see if this works man my apologies <laughs> no, it's uh, but, okay but we're having a go. tour of your house right now <laughs> <laughs> it's just dark in here and hopefully i won't wake anybody up um one second yeah hopefully uh you can still hear me while it charges so I was yeah i problems. definitely can but but go ahead and and, and Let's continue the interview while I try this charging method here. Uh, so you're, you're there talking about reforming the band, getting you guys back together there, Roy. Um, how did it come about that you signed to Nuclear Blast Records then? Yes. Um, so let me just plug in. Can you hear, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you crystal clear. Perfect. All right. So, um, going back to the story of um, uh, Ray and I uh, burying the hatchet, and um, he called me not to. Uh, he he said, "I don't want to form a band. I just want to be friends." And that's not why I called. And I said, "Let's just skip through the chase. If um, you have any wild idea of reforming the band, I can do it. I'm ready right now. It's if wow. if you want to do this, let's do it right now because I have the time right now." And so that was the beginning. That was uh, the first idea of actually doing album number six. So we got in the studio. It was just him and I. We, we uh, um, hired Nick Jett from Terror to uh, help us write some songs. Um, I'm really good friends with Andrew from Strife. We've been in bands together, and he lives, you know, not not so far from me. We've done a lot of a lot of records together, and. He came to, in to help and, and fill in the, a rhythm guitar role. And at the time, it was just the four of us. It was just two guitar players, Nick Jett and Ray. Uh, and we just, we started to bang out demos. And then 
that was uh, that was in January, M March of 2020. Oh. And um, that's when the pandemic hits and um, studio closes. Our files are stuck in the studio for five months. Everything stops. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. Everybody's confused. And, um, you know, we, we had to just, you know, maintain our faith, you know, hold fast to our courage and, you know, a lot of prayers and, and hoping whatever the confusion was, because when, when the pandemic hit, nobody knew what the hell in the beginning, it was, it was just kind of almost mayhem. It was confusion and, um, uh, never been through anything like that. Didn't anticipate this type of obstacle. It was, I couldn't call it from, from miles away, man. I, I, I would never have never heard the word pandemic, <laughs> yeah. you know, until at March. And, um, so, um, we waited. We get got back in the studio in, in July. The doors finally opened. We finished the demo, and then we rehired our old uh, manager, Scott Koenig, who used to manage us back for the Check Your People days and Do You Speak a Dead Language. Uh, he was uh, with Rush Artist Management. He used to manage Mad Ball, Earth Crisis, Fear Factory, Biohazard. Damn, uh, a lot of good man. Yeah, he's been he's been in the business for a long time. So he had a lot of. Uh, good connections with nuclear blast and other labels and so we shopped it and right away we got the interest from nuclear blast they'd say let's give it a shot and um we signed that year in october and december we were in in, in pre-production um I, we we were hurt we uh blocked off studio time with uh at downtown rehearsal studios it's owned by chris poland ex mega death guitar player Yes. And uh, he, he was really nice to us and, and, and made us feel at home. He wasn't, you know, some, some guys like, you know, dudes like that can, can have any attitude they want and come in, in, in the business, it seems. And, but, you know, uh, he, was very, he was very down to earth and very helpful. And in two months, we were able to knock out all the pre-production and, and the music. And then um, went in. The following year in, in January, we tracked for two months, all the basic tracking, took a break for a couple months and let Ray soak in and marinate on the tracks and and write the rest of the lyrics. And he went back in in the summer, did the vocals. And then in August, we mixed. September, we mastered. And then um, we took it from, from that time on until today, it was, it's been it's been the wait for uh, I think a six month wait in between that you know, we launched nuclear blast launched a campaign of promotions and all the interviews and and all the releases so you know it, when they said okay the album's not going to get released until June 10th and I was like wow man that's it's a long ways away but <laughs> man it went by so fast and and here we are today the album's released today uh, for you guys it was released yesterday and so yeah, yeah so so today it's finally out and it, and it took two years from the idea of actually starting from scratch from absolutely nothing no ideas not a riff not a lyric not even an idea for the for the for the title track of the album it was just straight to the drawing board and um it took two years to write about to write and record 13 songs with fully uh, with with vocals, tracking, mixing, and mastering, and here yeah. we are. In a nutshell, yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy, Roy. Because yeah, like you just mentioned, today is June the tenth. It's kind of it's pretty special that I get to talk to you on release day. It's like it's almost June eleven over here, but yeah, it's all sorts of awesome that you took time out on release day uh the album is an absolute banger. Can you tell us about the video "Place to Be" and and do you have any more coming up, Roy? Yeah, um, the place to be. Um, that that video, uh, I, the song, the song is a little bit different tuning. It's a drop C that we're, that downsets. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're 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 used, we were in drop C for most all the albums except drop C was uh, the first tuning that we did for the first demo. So that's really the original sound. So we wanted to try to come back to sound like 1992 meets 2022 yeah and so uh, 
uh, that the, the video was filmed in Burbank at a, a rehearsal studio called the Power Plant. It's a humongous place. You know, this it's it's a uh, it's 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 professional building, and and uh, we were able to set up our amps and our guitars and and actually play along live during the video. So it looks it's like there's a band, like a sincere band playing along the video. No lip syncing, everything we were plugged in, every take that we did, we were plugged in really loud. So Damn. it was it was real. We were playing along um, on real time. Everybody was playing, everybody was plugged in. Uh, so there was no fooling around doing somersaults and backflips and, and spins. We had to, you know, play our instruments and 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 that's the that's the image that I want to portray. You know, I want I want it, you know, I want it to be looked at us like a band that's jamming and we know that there's no nobody in there and and we all know we're making a video but i want i want people to see us actually playing our instruments and exactly the you know and in, in, in every form whether it's the way he hits bobby hits the drums from the way i pick to uh, to everything to how you know i'm plugged in the whole the whole thing and and i felt that um, there was a natural way about the the video, and um, and I was really pleased with the outcome. And then there's a other piece where um, uh, there was a location in downtown LA where it was a, a a remote. It was right in the middle of downtown LA. It's uh, it, it was a secret place oh. where Ray has his underground meetings with his graffiti crew UTI. Um, they've been around for. I want to say almost 40 years. They've been around the LA underground hip hop scene for a long time, and they've been they've been doing meetings and maintaining the the name for for a long time. And they they mean a lot to LA hip hop. Uh, that's where Ray, you know, is keeps in touch with his hip hop roots, with his graffiti, his raps, and and everybody in his crew are all into hip hop. So that place was filmed where he has his meetings. And it was just him and, and Bobby Blood. He he directed and filmed it. And so, um, you know, what what better, what you know, it, you know, what better teammate to have on your team where not, your drummer not only plays the drums, he can do a lot of other things. He can he can film a movie, a video. He can he can edit. He can engineer. So, you know, Bobby was a big help for us. And, and, and making the video uh, we were planning on doing another video for the place uh, for uh, new respect okay, um, yeah. we're optimistic that we're gonna be able to pull it off um, right now we're just waiting on Ray to come around he's 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 he works a lot he has an unforgiving job and and but he's had he's had um, he's been able to get off of work and in, in the past and do tours and and stuff like that so we're anticipating uh getting together really soon having that 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 big band meeting and and say okay now let's talk about touring before the year's over let's try to pull some shows off some tours and hopefully another video you know my idea in the beginning was to do a video for every song oh that'd be cool i, I that was my intention couldn't pull that off man <laughs> uh, just it's just uh, a lot of things got in the way. There was a lot of things happening. Then um, while we were, um, after we were done with the mix, um, Howie Weinberg mixed our album. This was, uh, uh, I would say, um, I want to say October, November of last year. Uh, right in, right around there, our, our manager, Scott Connick, passed away with through the, the Delta virus. And so um. it, just, it was one thing after another. And that was a big crushing blow. It, it was, um, he was, um, uh, how we say, um, he was our buffer. He was our, he was our, our middleman. He was our friend. He was, he was our manager. I mean, we didn't have to make those phone calls to the record label. It was talk to Scott. Yeah. Scott knew exactly what we, you know, he knows us. He's known us for a long time. And, and then Scott would relay the message to, to whoever we were working with, whether it be the label or, or promoters or um, uh, uh, journalists or whoever it may be, he was he was the man that was in between, and and keeping that professional relationship 
between the labels or the booking agents. And um, so when he left, we were forced to play another role. Um, we hired another manager, Craig and Lum from, um, from, from Heathen. He manages Exodus and Heathen. And um, we were with them. Well, he was with us for a month and um, um, it, we just, he was in Arkansas. We're here in LA. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we tried to, to, to mesh and make it work, but that didn't work out. So yeah. now, you know, on the management level, we're still kind of, you know, messy in that area, you know, but it was just, a, it was because we're patching things up in that area because we we just didn't anticipate our manager dying through this. So, um, after all the shortcomings and obstacles, we're, you know, we've been blessed and, and that this day has come and, you know, the, the video release was released and, and that was amazing. And, and now the day is here where our album is released. And for me, it's been a long time coming because I haven't been in the band and down set since 2000 and 2003. It's the last time I've been in down set. Almost so, 20 years, Roy. Yeah. For, for me to come back and, and grab a hold of these horns and, you know, the, the, the downset beast is a, a really hard, hard, hard one to, to get your hands on. You know, it's it's a tough, it's a tough one. Out of all the bands I've been in, this is one of the toughest, uh, uh, toughest bands when it comes to, uh, you know, getting things moving. And, and it's just, it, it, it seems to operate in its, in its own speed, whether you like it or not, you know. <laughs> But but my but my whole thing is that I really want to have uh, like minded people in the band who are uh, extremely optimistic and positive. It's very very important to surround ourselves around a team like that in order yeah. to win and achieve your short term and your long term goals. Because if you have guys that are constantly saying, ah, you know, how are we gonna how is that gonna work? How are we going to make that happen? And and that attitude, it, it, it stops you from progressing, you know. And, and so when you have guys that have a good attitude and believe that things are going to work out, that's when they work out. So although the downset machine is hard to push down the railways, um, once you get it going, it, it's it's a train. It's 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 a machine, man. So that you can't stop sort of thing. Yeah. I absolutely love the analogy there, Roy. That is, that's all sorts of awesome. So what, what is kind of up next for you guys? You sort of touched on that. You're going to try and hit the road depending on Ray. Do you, do you think that's a possibility and a possibility of heading out here? Maybe man, uh, the only territories that I have never been to in my career has been Australia, you know, New Zealand and South Af uh, South America. And oh, there you go. Those are the ter territories that I've been dying to, to come and and, and 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 play my music. Um, we're we're gonna give it our, our best shot to to get out there sooner than later, because that that's what we're supposed to do, and that's what I love to do is play live, and I love to play my guitar, and so we're gonna continue to 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 be positive and 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 and, and optimistic that we're gonna come out there you know there's like i said there's always some circumstance that that is uh you know preventing things right now and pandemics and whatnot <laughs> yeah right, right now you know i just i'll be honest we just we're all waiting on ray to come around he's just got his issues that he needs to deal with and and you know it just takes patience you know if i can't say hey man we need to get on the road or you're out of the band let's do this now you know we just we have to wait for for this to to let it um you know develop but right now we have an album release so it's like come on ray let's let's uh let's start getting this back on the road you know we we, we took a little bit of time off uh, he was you know um ray hadn't been in the studio for for eight years he hadn't been active with any any other bands myself i've, I've been active and do my other bands like power flow and cutthroat and um and the other projects i've been uh, i've been working on so i i haven't been really a cold as saying you know, I, I wasn't frozen i i was i was actually you know you, you know you know well well you know my producing skills and engineering skills are 
you know, it's getting better daily. So I was, I was ready to go. I, I was, I was ready for this. And, and then Ray, when Ray came around and, and he got back on track with his lyric writing and recording masterpiece, that guy's masterful when it comes to lyric writing. It, it, I've never met anybody like him that writes the way he does. And that's so passionate and, 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 and sincere about what he's writing about. And, um, he really takes you there. And, um, so, you know, um, hopefully, uh, you know, we can, uh, just start, you know, getting, getting back in the rehearsal studio because when we, we, we did this album, you got, you know, we, it was like giving birth to a baby. <laughs> it was, you know, and, and Ray, Ray was struggling at the end to come up with, with material. He had written, you know, 12 songs and he had one more to go and he was out of gas. He was out of ideas. It was, you, you know, everybody goes through writer's block. Everybody goes through, through that thing. And, and so when we finally finished, you know, um, uh, we were gassed. And so, yeah. but now I think we've had enough uh, time of rest. And, and now that the, now that the dates finally here, it, it felt like forever, but yet it got here really fast. And so we got to get on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely, man. And and you mentioned Powerflow in there too. Big fan of that group of yours. Uh, they bring your Powerflow is bringing out an album this year as well, aren't they, Roy? Yeah. So um, uh, I decided for myself. Uh, you know, I we had like I said, man. Bands bands go through a lot. Yeah. Bands go through a lot, and um, you know, I was a, I was a band I formed with Send Dog. And we formed it in 2016 to 2015, and 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 then a similar thing happened with us. We we we, we did a demo, and, and uh, our manager Deb Klein, um, she also manages Cypress Hill. She went off and got us to deal with new new Damage record with within that year, and we were same thing. Went into pre production in 2017, and and recorded the album in 2017 with Jay Baumgartner, and then next thing you know, in 2018. We did a whole full year run, yeah, and then um, and then Send Dog he, he he's he's also busy with Cypress Hill, so you know there there was um, th there was a point there where we all we all just went off and did our own thing. Billy did Billy Bio, uh, Christian is doing Violence, Christian Oldie, Oldie Wobers, Fernando Schaefer went back home, and then. Uh, uh send dog and cypress hill album and then so in between all that i went and, and we and formed downset and it wasn't my intentions but that, that got that call from ray like i told you yeah and then i just got really into that and 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 there was like a, a course collision there and i just told the guys look man I'm, I'm just gonna do the downset you guys go ahead and 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 do power flow and you know Hey, I'm gonna miss this album. Sorry, but maybe the next one. Maybe I could come back for the next one, and, and maybe I could come back in the band one day. But right now, I'm I'm not with Power Flow right now. Oh so. wow, there you go. Yeah, see, I plead ignorance on that one. I didn't know, Roy, but that's it's awesome <laughs> that you're back with Power Flow and getting things moving. And thank you so much for taking time out. Right before we go, Roy, because I know you've got to get on the road and that sort of thing. But I want to grab a recommendation from you, something that your fans. We were like, what's something that you've been checking out? It can be music, movies, Netflix series, anything like that. Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, I've, 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 I've been listening to, to some hardcore. I've been listening to uh, uh, like uh, bands like No, no Warning from Canada. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they, they've been around for a while, but um, I, a, a friend of mine at work showed me some songs, and I've just been listening to a, a lot of, you know, you know, certain, certain bands like them. Um, um, you know, um, I, I also been listening to the Beatles and some reggae and some ska, which I really don't listen to that. Sometimes I get, uh, you know, you, you get the writer's block. You want to kind of veer off and listen to different genres and kind of, you know, kind of get into some more rhythms, you know, but, yeah. um, yeah, as, as far as my, you know, my music, uh, what, what I've been listening to, I, I you know, I just, I haven't been listening to that much, you know, a little bit of MDC. 
I got into MDC this month a lot, and uh, I've been um, uh, what I've been also doing is uh, you know, you know making amplifiers. You know, as you see, I, I got. Oh, I can see that's cool. Yeah, and then I got my rig back there. I got yeah, you know, I got. I don't know if you can see that, and just uh, just just working on stuff and and just keeping positive and and, and you know always always making sure my gear is working. I put all my money, everything I have into my gear. And, you know, as, as a musician, if, if you're a guitar player or a bass player or a drummer, you know, I, I highly recommend that, um, you keep your equipment up to par and, and you have a backup for a backup and, and, and be ready when the time comes to rehearse or, or record or go on tour, you know, uh, your, your livelihood, and it comes down to a lot of things. Um, and, and for me, my, my livelihood comes down to my instruments, uh, my guitars. I play Jackson guitars, uh, USA. I, I never played Jackson before until the last three years. And, and it's like, man, where you been my whole life? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was playing, you know, Gibson SGs and Les Pauls. Um, so, you know, I... I make sure to, to to keep my amplifiers properly maintained. I buy new tubes. I have a tube tester. I make sure that everything is always working. My cords are working. Um, you have to have good cords or if you have a wireless system, get the best wireless system that money can buy because buying anything cheap is going to break on you. And you'll be happy to buy, the, the, you know, I, I, I always suggest to buy the best stuff possible. And um, because it's it's going to perform well for you in the studio. Oops, it's going to perform well for you in the studio, uh, sonically, and the instruments are 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 less temperamental, especially guitars. When you have a good set of wood, a piece of wood, and and, and you, you know you have a, a really good make the, versus a copy, and, and and there's there's people who you know uh, who settle for for the, the copies because they're just cheaper and, 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 and they want to, they want to make themselves believe that they're just as good as the, the, the better stuff. But it, it never really is, you know, always, you know, you're always lying to yourself when you do that. So invest the money, get the good stuff, and then you can always sell it because it, the, the good stuff never depreciates. It only appreciates all the good, you know, the, the, the good quality gear. So, you know, I, I've, I've been wanting to recommend this to this. You, people always ask me, Hey man, why do you spend so much money on gear? You don't need that much gear live. You don't need this. You don't need that. And, and a lot, you know, I've been on the road. I've been, I've done tons of tours and, and I, I just, I just have different rigs and stuff. And I'd explain to people, look, man, if, if you're not ready, if you don't have your gear in tip top shape, you know, that's your livelihood and it's going to reflect on you. It's going to reflect on your band. And so that's, you know, that's when it, when it comes to any type of recommendation for, for, for guitar players, that that's, that's one. I mean, really, you know, save your money for the best stuff. So, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I love that right there, Roy. And just thank you so much for taking time out. I can't stress that enough, especially at the time in the morning. It is Roy from Downset. Their brand new album, Maintain, is out now. Be sure to hit them up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Downset LA, uh, Twitter at Downset LA, and Instagram at Downset Official. Thanks, Roy. Appreciate you taking time out, man. Thank you so much for having me. It's my sincere pleasure, and, and you have a good one, and, and hope to see you out on the road. 